Hey guys, this is Shane and welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel. Today, hey, I'm going over just an old school, here's what I found at, at my library bookstore, my thrift stores with comps and it's kind of a cool eclectic mix. Even have some fiction stuff in on this and and some, some NASA type memorabilia that I, that I found that I thought was awesome. So anyway, um, hey, thank you so much for the channel support, uh, for the views, the comments, the likes, uh, the subscriptions. Um, just, you know, let's just, let's just keep doing it, see what happens. So. Um, with that jumping in, uh, my library, I've been able, you know, I went several weeks there where I wasn't able to go by my library bookstore, but I've hit it the last couple of weeks, you know, on, on schedule and, um, you know, it's, I like to go by at least once a week because it's the type of place that has a ton of turnover. They get a lot of donations. Um, there's, it's, it's well organized. It's pretty good size. And, you know, it is the type of place too, that if you see something you're the least bit interested in you better get it because if you, you leave it, it's going to be gone. There's, there's a lot, lot of people that come in, but they get so many donations. And then, you know, a couple of my thrift stores, I've noticed I'm really pulling most of my items from one thrift store now on the thrift front. Then there's this America's thrift that's opened up. I mentioned it before. It's pretty close to the house. It's kind of on the way home from work and it's really easy for me. I stop by my post office and then just to, it's just like a mile from there and I can, I can duck in and like, just it's, it takes no effort because I'm literally driving by it. But I think that there's, that that America's thrift is sucking donations from the rest of the, the thrift market in town because my, you know, well, there's a, there's a goodwill that is always awful. I don't even, I hardly ever go there. One, their books are really pricey. They're like, $2.99, $3.99 for books, which maybe for some of you guys, like California or something, that's that's normal. But for here in Alabama, it's really high. And their selection's poor, but their prices are awful. Then there's a Salvation Army that I used to be, it was like a little honey hole, and I, I really don't get anything from it anymore. There's a couple of other, you know, neighborhood thrifts that I used to get lots of stuff, but it seems like I'm getting them all from this one place now. And I just wonder, because it's one of these bigger thrift superstore kind of things, if they're pulling donations from the others. But it could just be a natural ebb and flow. But anyway, I've got some good stuff. So um, kind of jumping in. So at that thrift store, one of my previous uh, videos, I mentioned a bunch of highlights magazines that I was getting like for three, four, four dollar. Well, I went back in on their magazine rack. They had tons more of these things. This one was the High Five edition. And then there was um, the ones called Puzzle Buzz, okay? And I, I, I leaf through these. These have stickers in them. And you wanna make sure the stickers are intact and that they haven't been used. But both of these are better than the Puzzle Mania ones that I, I found last week. And I have to think that this is probably from the same donations, but they didn't get them all out at once, you know? So they've got some out and then like a week later, there's some more. But anyway, I'll be parsing these out and at the price I got them for, I'll be able to sell, they're typically selling for about, the high fives look like they're selling for about $2 each. So getting them for that 25 to 30 cents, um, hey man, I that's 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 good profit, right? Put five of them together, you know, it's, it's good profit. So anyway, that's good, I'll put that out of the way. Another thing that I found that was a repeat and this was at my, um, this was at my library, was in the language section, there was another Croatian dictionary. And this one, like on Amazon, this thing's less like 115 bucks. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one of the, the, the Croatian dish to English dictionary that I got last week, I think I'm gonna put on eBay. I've got it already prepped, the list. And this one I think I'm gonna send in to Amazon. So it'll be kind of, uh, it'll be a race to see who who orders Croatian English dictionaries, which platform sells better on those. So, um, so then I found this, this is a kind of an interesting book. All right. You see this, it says the mountain goat. So I just saw that on the side, right? And I'm like, Hey, that's interesting. I pulled it out. It turns out that it's a train book, right? It's, um, I don't know. It says, um, I thought this was in Tennessee, but maybe in Virginia. I don't know. Um, Tracy city branch line, of the Nashville, Chattanooga, St. Louis, Louisville, Nashville, CSX. So it looks like maybe Tracy City. I think that maybe that's Tennessee. Uh, but anyway, it's railroads, historical. I have uh, list comps on this for like 50 bucks. Um, it's, it's, there's actually one collectible. There's one on Amazon since for like 700, but I think it's like a $40 book. It's good. I love the subject matter. It always sells good. 
Then, okay, here's one. This was kind of a cool, like $20. Um, I got I get this one for a dollar. This uh, this great Jack Kerouac book. Love this. Love the cover on that. You know, if you ever read any Jack Kerouac, like um, On the Road, Dharma Bums. I mean, that whole you know that whole you know generational thing there, and, and it, it's really some some pretty entertaining stuff. Um, I, those those I, lo I like those too. Uh, but there's this this will sell about for about twenty. I got a buck in it. Plus, this is this great edition. All right, so then. There's uh look at these. I found these for, I got these for 50 cents each. And um, they're not big money, but they're so cool. They're NASA. Uh, it's funny because a lot of them is NASA, um, you know, uh, space station. So it's NASA with US Russian. So I don't know if there's gonna be much of a market for them right now, but you know, hey, they're NASA collectibles, all these, you know, space station. And they, they you know, talk about it, they're stickers. They're, they're not big money. I think I, these usually sell, you get one or once in a while that are like 10 or 12 bucks, but most of the time they're five or six bucks. But for 50 cents each, I could put them together. And, you know, the see cool, buy cool factors there. I thought they were pretty neat. So somebody will want them. They'll, I thought they were cool. Um, so then here's, here's another, look at this one, Neuromancer, William Gibson. So this is kind of a, a bolo kind of thing, right? This, this book will sell for like 10 bucks. Uh, this is a 20 second printing, 10 bucks is where it's going to sell. You get an early print of this, it can sell for 25 or 30. And there's one, one ACE edition that will sell for like 35. Um, there's all kinds of specialty editions. What this is, and I've mentioned this before on some other ones I found, this is kind of the cyberpunk genre, right? Anytime I see something that's cyberpunk, I always check it out because it's got a good, good resell. And some of these early... Um, this was like 1983, 1984 when this book came out. So it's a great book to look, look out for. You can find it just, but in general, the genre, even though remember this one, if you can, but, but the genre is really cyberpunk. It, it's, it's got good resale. So check that out. Okay. So in my library, you know, I, I found this, uh, Smith and Wesson revolver handbook. I had a Colt 45 handbook that I found there. And again, it has to be the same person that donated it, but I found that a couple weeks ago. It sold for like 30, 35 bucks. Uh, this is the Smith & Wesson, it'll be about the same. This stuff's a no-brainer if you see it. it. It's just, you know, I mean, I only I only paid, uh, let's see what I paid for this one. Oh, I paid a dollar for it. See how they put the, I have to erase those out. They put the dollar in a month. So, I paid a buck for it. It'll sell for that 30 to 35, it's great condition. All right, another fiction. All right, this is uh, uh, Les Grossman's The Magicians. You know they did. Uh, it was I think AMC or FX. They did. They did a TV ad adaption of this. It was like five or six seasons, and it was actually pretty entertaining. This is a first edition, first print, and you know you can look for that on. You know you can see these on the. See, look when you look at the number line. See the the number line goes like one three five, and then even some odds. See that one since it's the one there. You know that's a first print. Sometimes it'll say first print, first edition too. So. You know this, this with confidence, this is a first first, as they say. Um, I've got soul comps on the first first of this one. And this this thing is in really good condition. Very, very light wear. Um, this, I've got soul comps on this for like 30 bucks. So there's just some of those, um, fiction's harder for me. Um, nonfiction, you know, I mean, it, it's almost nonfiction. I always say, you, look, you know, you're small publishers, weird is good, you know. If, and, and, and actually there's a point here to remember. If, or to think about, if, if it piques your interest, if you think it's kind of cool, there's a good chance that somebody else will too. I mean, that's not always the case because we can fall in love with our own BS sometimes, right? But uh, but weird weird is weird is good on selling stuff, right? And you know, it's especially books and nonfiction. That's true. You get into the hobbies and histories, and like I've said before, you know, it's a generic World War II history book has really could have very limited resale value, but a history of a specific battle or some obscure thing from a World War II, you know, or mission or something, that can be high value, right? So it's, it's the same sort of thing. Weird is good, but for me, fiction is harder. You know, when I go into a place, and, and this may be for you guys too, um, I, 
I hit fiction last. I And if I'm pressed for time, I don't even look at the fiction. And I know people are saying, there's money in fiction. There can be money in fiction. Yes, I agree. You can make money on fiction. But I believe that the bigger money is in nonfiction. And um, if I always go to fiction last. That's because a lot of that, like the mass market stuff that you see, you know, I mean, you know, you got the Tom Clancy's, the Lee Childs, the Dean Koontz, you know, even though his early stuff when he was doing under a, a pseudonym can be quite expensive. Um, well, and, and, and some exceptions to that, you know, some of the early Stephen Kings. I mean, there's, there's things that I look for, but in general, the fiction, all of the mass market fiction hardback is kind of like, um, you know, it's kind of like noise for me. I, uh, and again, the, you can make money there if you get it at the right price, but you to to make the bigger dollar books, I believe, are in the nonfiction section. So for me to you know, if you've watched my stuff for any length of time, you know, you, you're like, man, this dude never looks at fiction. Well, I do. I just don't pull as much from it. But those are a couple of good cases, right? Neuromancer and the Magicians. That's good stuff. And of course, the exception to that for me is I always hit science fiction, right? If there's a science fiction shelf, then because I know that that's what I grew up reading. I collect science fiction. I know the authors, I know the subject matter, and um, it's easy for me to look at and just say, yeah, this is a great volume. This is this is not both for resale as well as my personal collection. So anyway, enough of that rant. Uh, other things I found. I found this stack of these music books, and I think all of these have CDs in them, which boosts the price. Sometimes these will sell for like 15 bucks. Here's a blues guitar. Here's a blues keyboard um, intermediate. There's a rock keyboard, you know, and that one's uh, mastering it. And then another rock keyboard intermediate. So what I might do is actually take the rock keyboards and sell them together in a package deal. I'll have to do a little more research, but you can, these things will sell, you know, and, and what you always do is just, if it says on the cover that it has CD enclosed, always make sure that the CD is enclosed, all right? Like this CD doesn't even look like it's been opened. Um, you can take the time to take it out and make sure that it's not all, all scratched, but that one hadn't even been opened, so that was good. All right, this was a kind of cool find, um, Flower Obsession. And it's this book on, like, you know, I guess like quilting. It's like quilting flowers. I got slow comps on this rascal for 65 bucks. It's a great find. Uh, I paid, paid a buck for it, so it's soft back at this thrift store. All right, now here's some that are probably end up going to Amazon. I'm trying to decide, but I got this Mensa Gambling. All these paperback ones were a buck. Um, this is like a $12, $13 book, I think. Um, this one, probably something I wouldn't sell on eBay, but it looks like on Amazon it's got a pretty high uh, seller rank, and it's, um, you know, it looks like it's going to be a $20 book. This uh, Names for Dogs. It's kind of an interesting one. Uh, Rock Salt, it's got uh, poetry and poems. Um, it, it looks like it's probably going to be about a $20 book. Now, this one was kind of one I would pick up for even maybe for eBay, but I think I'm going to send it in for Amazon because I think a bit easy sell there. The wrap, it's a weaving reference. And this one looks like it may be more like 25 bucks. So all these for a buck. And then paint yourself positive. That's another, it's going to be that 15 to, to it's going to be 20 bucks. So that's good. And um, okay, uh, then I got this huge, this Tennessee titan of commerce and industry. It's a book on Tennessee. It was uh, like 2012 or something. Now, the one cool thing is it's signed by, there's uh, Bill Frist. Um, you know, so I, I'm not sure. And it, see, look here, it's also numbered. Number 62 out of 120. I see this on Amazon for like 30, 37 bucks. I want to do some more research on this. I don't see any copies of it on eBay. I'll do some more research, see where it goes. And then the final thing, I actually got three of these. Actually, one of them's across the room, but Missouri Rolla yearbooks. Now, yearbooks, I got these for a buck fifty each. You know, here's another one. These are like 1978, 79, and 80. They were in good condition. And I actually saw um, saw one of these sell, I think it was the 1979 one. It sold for like 40 bucks. And yearbooks are something if you get them at the right price. They're heavy, they take up space, but it seems like they will eventually sell. It just depends on if you have the storage. Now, obviously the older stuff, like in the 40s and 50s, sometimes it sells, you know, I don't know if it's people that are getting it for, the, for their, where their parents graduated. It could just be people getting something to, um, I'm not sure what they'd use them for. I, I would think it was all be family related or they went there and wanted their old yearbook or 
I don't know, but they will sell and they're kind of cool. But when I see them at estate sales, estate sales, a lot of times will put them at like five bucks or eight bucks. I'm like, I'm not buying it for that. Cause it's, it can be a long time sitter. So that for me, I got them for a dollar 50. They're good condition. I actually had some soul comps on the Missouri Rolla. Um, I actually have a, a buddy at work that, uh, graduated from Rolla in, in the mid eighties after these. So anyway, it's, uh, it's something to keep out for them. Those yearbooks, if you can get them at the right price, but they can be long sitters. Uh, just, just remember that. So that's it. Uh, quite a few things. Just give you some ideas, some, some be on the lookout for some genres. And, um, it's the type of thing I like to sell and hopefully those comps and things that'll help you train your eyes so that, you know, when you're out there and you see cool, you can buy it too. So then list it and sell it. So, um, that's it. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.